Uh, my name is Joseph Cairns. I work with the Sandbox team. We have a stall down there. Um, Shri Reid was originally scheduled to give this uh, talk, but there is a conflict this morning, uh, so, so I'm giving it for her. I'm going to spend the next 25, well, probably at this stage, 20 minutes talking about the DevNet Sandbox, um, how you can use it. Um, if you have any, I'll just ask you if you, if you have any questions, just leave them towards the end. Uh, I also have my colleague here, Stella Hanna, to talk about any of the IVT stuff. Uh, we're going to be covering that as well. So I'm just going to build a quick schedule. And the schedule is going to be, I'm just going to start off with an overview of the sandbox, what exactly it is, uh, how our developers and partners can use it. Um, we're going to define it. And without the slides, I'm actually going to show it to you in real time. It's probably better anyway that you see it in real time. I'm just going to go through then some of the lab models. We're going to drill down a little bit into how it works. Uh, we've had a lot of partners through, so we've kind of refined our solution to uh, suit partners depending on their testing uh, and depending on what they want to do. At the end, uh, towards the end, we're going to go into the IVT. So our new sandbox portal allows us now to run IVTs directly uh, from, it, it's a new tool that we have, so you can run IVTs directly from the portal. So we have some new IVTs up there. Uh, so we're going to talk a, bit, a little bit about that. And towards the end, then, I'm just going to run you through a roadmap. Um, and the roadmap is just new stuff up and coming in the next couple of quarters. OK? So Sandbox, what is the Sandbox? Well, the Sandbox is a hosted lab service that enables DevNet members, such as ISVs, partners and developers, from, the, from some of the biggest partners to some of the smallest developers who are working out of their, their garage, to quickly, easily, and securely integrate with Cisco technologies. So once they get in there, they can integrate their product, they can develop and test, and we support the whole product throughout the life cycle of the, um, of the application. So I know that's... That sounds like a bit of a, a mouthful, so I'm just going to put it in a different way. Many of you guys were around, you know, you've been wandering around here in, in the DevNet zone. You've been looking at the different pods, some for SDN, some for collaboration, some for IoT, some for networking. So some of you might have, you know, you might be with established companies who have, you know, your own applications going for a while, or you could be just a developer thinking about what's the next big thing. So. It, Take, for instance, IoT. You have an idea for IoT. OK, it's gaining traction now. You like the idea of the Cisco IoT solution. Um, so you think, OK, I could, I could build an application around IoT. It could be successful. So what you can do is um, you go around, you educate yourself. You might go down to the, learn, the learning labs. You talk to the dev evangelists in IoT. You would, uh, you know, just, Go to the DevNet site, read the documentation, read the APIs. Okay, so you're ready to develop and test. But then you hit a roadblock. Okay, you need, say in the IoT case, you need access to one of our CGR routers. Okay, you want to get your hands on, some, on a real router to do some testing. And that's where we come in. Okay, so we provide the labs to you so you can develop. And all these labs are pre built, predefined, so you don't worry, have to worry about the Cisco side of things. You don't have to worry about you know, on, on the collaboration side, you don't have to worry about call manager talking to cup. Once you come in, the lab is built, okay? And then you start your development. So we try and make it as easy as possible for people to develop, test, and, and, con and continue that cycle. And then eventually, at the end, to do your IVT, okay? So what can you do in our sandbox? Well, there's... There's lots, of there's lots of things you can do. The first thing you can do is try stuff out. OK, so if you, on the collaboration side, you hear call manager 10.5, OK, you, you know, it's new, or, or 10.5.2, or even 11, which is coming up later on this year. You want to come in, and you want to see what are the new features. You can quickly come in, have a look through the menus, see what's new, see how different stuff is, is implemented. Something very simple like that. You can integrate your product. So you can integrate using any of the APIs that we use. Uh, you don't have to rack stuff in your own, um, 
in, on your own time, on your own schedule, everything is there for you, okay? You're saving time and money, okay? You can collaborate, so if you, can, if you book one of our labs, you can actually share out that session to other partners. We have, other, we have many partners, I think, uh, yeah, we have many partners who have built sessions, they have test teams all over the world, some in Europe, some in China, some in America, and they actually come in and they use the same lab, okay? You can get early access, so we have some EFT stuff that we give early access to partners, some of the APIC stuff uh, in networking side, and also some of the collaboration stuff. So that's really BU dependent, but we can have the ability to, to give early access to some applications. You can, testing, testing and development, that's what we do. Okay, so you can come in, you can start testing. We have a bunch of test tools in there. We have Camelot, which is an in-house test tool for Cisco, simulates SIP and skinny endpoints. We also have Imperex. Um, we also have Ixia. So we have lots of different test tools in there for testing your product. So you can do load testing, negative testing, feature testing, all the, all the different testing you want to do. And then you want to complete your IBT. So this is kind of the end game. If you want to uh, complete the IBT, get a competitive advantage, and um, yeah, and, and just and get the Cisco stamp of approval. OK, so if you go to the, I, I'm going to cover this later on, but this is our portal. So in order to access this, you go to the developer.cisco.com. There's a sandbox link in there. You sign up, OK? There's a link in there that becomes active into the sandbox, OK? So you can see here that we have multiple tiles ranging on different technologies. So we have call account and billing. We have the IBT stuff here, OK? So that's kind of, if you want to do the IBT stuff, you select those tiles. We have APIC stuff for networking. We also have other technologies that are coming on board later on, like InterCloud Fabric, um, SDN Controller. We have Contact Center in there on the collaboration side. Viral is coming soon, is coming soon as well. Um, we, we actually come from a collaboration point of view, so we have lots of collaboration stuff in there, like Jabber Guest, Contact Center, Cisco Media Sense. So a lot of partners would have come to us and said, listen, I want to develop something with Cisco Media Sense. Okay, can you give me an environment? So we can spin something up fairly quick for them. Okay, so a lot of these have been built through feedback from the partner. Okay. We also have there's various lab options in there as well. I'm not going to go through the tools just for the sake of time, but we have options once you go in and you, and you reserve. I'll just show you quickly. You can show the details first before you. So this is one of our APIC labs. It's one of our simpler APIC labs where you can, these are real uh, Cisco routers and switches that you can have access to. Uh, once you get in there, you can test out APIC, you can integrate with it, um, and test on a real network. So we have various lab models as well. I'm just going to go through some of the lab models. So through feedback from partners, we quickly discovered that even if multiple partners are working in collaboration, they, they don't want to do the same thing. Some of them just want to come in and do some quick testing, register an IP phone, register a Jabber endpoint. They don't really care what's in the background. Okay? So we have what's called always-on labs. So these labs are basically, they're there 24-7, 365. They can come in. They don't have to reserve these labs. I'm going to come to the, re to the reservation labs in a second. So they can come in, say if they even have the hard phone, they have a, a Cisco DX650 or they have a third party SIP endpoint. We have the automation in place so they can put in their MAC address, it gets written to the call manager, they get sent out connection details, and they can quickly just see if their third party SIP endpoint registers with the IP phone. Okay? So it's very quick, very simple. It's just used basically for the the main difference is there's no admin access into the back end. Okay? And then you have the other partners who come in and say, listen, I need a full network with full access to all the servers. And that's what's called a reserve lab. 
Okay, so these reserve labs, they're very resource intensive. They use up lots of space, lots of com compute. We don't have an infinite amount of resources, so you have multiple partners who are chasing the same resources, so that they need to book some time. But once they book that time on the, on the, on the, on the lab, it's theirs. The labs are spun up in real time. The, the VMs are pulled up. The hardware is reset. They can test. You can do what they want. They have a full range of tools. And at the end of the session, everything is torn down. And they can come back in later on uh, and, and retest if they need to. So they have full admin access for the reservation labs. So, so with the reserve lab as well, you can have, as I said earlier, you can have, if you're a single company with multiple test sites, you can let all your test teams access the same labs. You can share out sessions. You can collaborate, basically. So I just want to talk about IVT. So I'm just going to go back here. So IVT historically was executed, well, it used to be ex by, executed by in-house by Cisco. Then we have some third-party approved uh, test houses. But now with this tool, we can do the IVTs on the portal itself. So a lot of the IVT stuff like call account and billing, it's basically the same. It's, you're making A to B calls. You're making transfers. A lot of this stuff is easily automated. So that's what we've done. So I just go call, call, call account. Yeah. So I'm just going to show you the call account and billing IVT. This is our lab. Some, we have Unity connection, phone view. We have the central network here, just showing that everything, everything is connected on the same VLAN. We have the pub and sub for redundancy. We have a partner server as well that we make available to partners so they can, they can bring in their application and install it. We have an FTP server as well. In the case of CAB, you need to verify that the FTPs are coming, so we have a server for that. Uh, we have presence for CUP. We have phone view as well, which is a, an application we use for remote phone control. So, so some of the test cases cannot be automated yet. So we allow access to remote phone control so they can actually do the test cases remotely. So all the instructions are here. We have a tab here for instructions. So the, t the, like the test plan is contained in here. All the, uh, the connection info, everything you need is in the instructions. You don't have to go looking through emails or looking through other websites for the instructions. Everything is there. And then you have the commands. Wrong button. So the commands are done sequentially. So you start off with the integration. Then you go into, uh, you, you just verify your integration. Then you start your automated call generation, which lasts one to two hours. Then you go into some of the manual test cases. So you cannot skip steps. Everything has to be done sequentially, and you have to pass all the steps. And at the end, you can submit. Okay, and that comes to us for review. So it, it's, it's something that you're saving time. You don't have to go traveling to third-party test houses. You're saving cost, uh, and everything can be done from your, basically from your workbench. So the, the, the available technologies today are call account and billing. We've spun up an endpoint and accessory um, IVT lab. So you can do third-party SIP endpoints, uh, headsets, stuff like that. And we've just brought online a voice recording, uh, which is in use this week. We have partners in there this week. So voice recording is a, is a new feature that we brought in. So the good thing about this tool is we can spin things up pretty quick, you know, spin things up. Um, test it out, bring partners in for some beta testing, and um, it's pretty easy. So I've gone through that. So another thing, we're not exclusively putting this on the portal. You still have the option, if you want to do IVT, to go through the third party uh, endpoint, or the, 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 the test house, OK? It is a bit cheaper this way. Um, it's on the slides here. If you want to 
more information, you can come up to me and sell at the end. Uh, we have no problem with that. Uh, but you still have the option to go to the third party um, test house. So just for you guys at Cisco Live Milan, we have a special offer for the next 30 days. So for the, any of the collaboration, uh, IBTs, we're offering 10% off. Okay, so you need to book by February the 27th, the 28th, and you have then 12 months to complete your IBT. So if you have any, any more information about that, you can come up and talk to Stella. Stella has all the information. So lastly on the roadmap, we're, we're constantly trying to keep up with all the technology. As I said, we, we used to come from a cloud point of view. And so when DevNet kind of took over um, ownership of the other technologies such as IoT and networking, we filtered in there too. Okay, so we're looking at rolling out more contact center stuff, more IOE stuff, uh, security orchestration with the virtual ASAs, um, open SDN controller, anything that we can make available through the sandbox, we will do so to, to try and get you in and get you um, just developing as fast as possible. We're also going to bring in some new IBT labs, um, phone applications, provisioning, stuff like that. You'll see them coming online. Features include save and restore, so we don't have save and restore at the moment. If you come in and book a lab, Okay, you need to save your own stuff. Are you, are, like when you come back in again, it's not going to be safe for you. We're going to introduce that. I think it's, 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 uh, it's, it'll be um, really good for people who can save their own applications. We're going to file transfer anyone who wants to upload their OVAs to our data center. We're going to have a, a, an extremely fast file transfer system that they can upload their, AV, their, their OVAs pretty quickly. Um, and we're going to have more support. So when you're doing IBTs online like this, you need to make sure that the support is in the background uh, to just to make sure that everything goes smoothly. OK, it's just you need someone there in the background in case you have questions. So we're going to in increase our support um, through chat and, and through the various tools that we have. So that's it. If you have any questions, f let me know. Yeah. You want to say that again? Yeah. So uh, for the um, for the IVT system, uh, for the certification, um, how do you agree uh, uh, to um, provide a test plan that will be part of the IVT? So what are the steps that has to be done? What are the, some that are not mandatory? Yeah. Is there an agreement phase with the, the, the supplier or something like that? Yeah, so the way it used to be was, and I used to be involved in IVT, we used to talk to the customer or the customer, the, the partner. Yeah. And we go through the test plan and we say, okay, do you support this? Do you support that? How about load? Um, so at the moment, we're putting more of the power back in the partner's hands. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you don't support a test case, that can be marked. Okay, okay that can be marked in the tool and, and it can be uh, reviewed when you submit uh, the IBT. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... I'm not sure if there's going to be initial talks with the partners. Partners are free to come in and book their IBT. Mm -hmm. But if there's any questions, we have a forum, we have emailers, and it's pretty quickly you yeah. can get an answer. I just tried to figure out how seamless it is. So uh, if yeah. basically the partner is passing the IBT on its own and then there is a validation by Cisco that says, OK, they have passed that test, that test, that test, then that's quite easy and seamless. But is it this kind of process that this which it, is put, put in place? I mean, the process is very new. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're going to be streamlining it. Okay. Okay, so there's going to be, there's probably going to be changes to the process and how we can improve it. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, we've, we've had maybe three or four partners through CAB alone. And, uh, yeah, five, yeah. And we've had some very good feedback from them. Okay, but I do take your point. Some features are supported, some features are not supported. Mm -hmm. So we will have to streamline to cater for that. Okay. This guy deserves a, <laughs> a scarf. So just once again, apologies for having no slides. There was a mix-up. I don't know what happened. 
Um, but I hope it was informative. If you have any other questions, we have a stand down here, just, just down here. There's a couple of good, very good looking guys down there who are willing to talk to you. Um, so that's it. Thanks very much.